Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to turn things over to Catherine Lee. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today for this uh, Journalism 207 session on shooting great photos with a phone. Uh, we hope you all find it interesting and join us for more. Today, we have with us Greg Reck and Brianna Sukup both photographers at the Portland Press Herald. They're going to talk about some of the technical things to think about when you're taking phone photos, but they're also gonna talk about what makes a great photo in the first place, how they decide what to shoot and how they got into photojournalism. Don't forget, we'll leave time at the end for some questions. Uh, so please feel free to put one in the chat box at any time. I'm going to kick off the session with a general question for both of you. Um, how did you each know that this was what you wanted to do? What motivated you to get into photojournalism? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, hi. So uh, that's a good, I honestly, I was thinking about it because I was thinking about when I was in high school if I thought that this was an option, like this, that if I knew that this job existed and I don't think I did, um, I knew there was a newspaper, my parents got it. And I guess I knew that there were photos in the newspaper, but I don't think I realized that it was like, you could get that as a job. Um, so I always liked taking photos. And then I um, took an art class and I did that. And I kind of realized, I think what I like best is like not having to like create an image or like make something happen. I like just being there and, and watching things happen. And that's when I switched my major to, to journalism. And I was like, okay, I tried writing and I, and I really liked the, I, I liked talking to people. I like hearing stories, but I didn't really like writing very much. And I, that's when I was like, oh wait, there's a photojournalism class, like I can try this. And it just like kind of clicked for me immediately. And I was like, okay, I think this is what I wanna do. Or like, I've never liked anything this much at least. I definitely <laughs> wasn't a kid who like knew what they wanted to do when they when they grew up. And so I did that and um, graduated from college and got some internships. And then I got this job about a year after graduating. So that's how I did it. What about you, Greg? Uh, I got my first camera at age 14 and photography was a pretty serious hobby of mine through my teenage years. And I remember as I was graduating high school, um, I went to a smaller high school, so we didn't have a student newspaper, but I did photograph for the yearbook. Um, but I remember telling, uh, I had uh, an older uh, uh, gentleman who was a, a relative uh, his brother was an architectural photographer, and I remember telling him, I'm going to become a photojournalist. And he told me, you can't do that. You can't just become a photojournalist. <laughs> and maybe that sort of like, you know, I like a challenge, but I, I am in the same boat as Rihanna. I didn't know that really that photojournalism existed until I was maybe 18, 19, and didn't know exactly which tack to take. Um, and really the in, in for me was, um, I took an adult education class in photography, and I think I already knew everything that the class was gonna teach, but I noticed that it was being taught by a local newspaper photographer. And I said to myself, he'd be a good contact to make. And that's really how I got started. I, uh, I took his class and I started freelancing for that newspaper, uh, which is actually the same newspaper that I grew up delivering as a paper boy. <laughs> um, and I freelanced for them intermittently. And then uh, I started working for a group of weeklies in where I grew up in southeastern Connecticut. Uh, and I kind of did things backwards. It, after uh, three years at the weeklies, I then decided to go to college and study photojournalism. Um, so I think before um, we get into some of the technical aspects of shooting with a phone compared to shooting with an actual camera, um, I'd love to hear from you guys like what you think constitutes a great photo. And I know we have some samples um, of your own photojournalism that I thought um, you could sort of talk us through and, and talk about how you got that shot and why it's it's a favorite of yours or one that you think is representative of your work. Um, do we want to, let's start with uh, Brianna. 
And I think um, Strawberry has some of our images, or your images that uh, okay. she can show. Okay, um, these are like my phone photos. So I, yeah. I, I, I feel like I really struggle sometimes to take photos when I'm not working. Like I don't really like having my work camera with me. And I don't know if that's cause I started photojournalism. Like I, I never really like took photos of my friends. I didn't like get a camera when I was 14 and I wasn't like running around with it. Like I'd started photojournalism like in school. So I kind of saw the having the camera as like work mode a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so I really think of like my phone as like a separate thing like that. That's like my fun camera. Um, I do use it for work sometimes, you know, if I have to tweet a photo and, or, you know, I definitely have, but, um, but I really think of it as separate. Like I just got back from Italy and I didn't bring my camera to Italy. Like I just used a phone mostly and a disposable foam camera. So I don't know, I, I really see the phone as like something fun. Um, so this photo, for example, like that, this is when I was in New York City and I don't want to bring my, I don't want to lug my heavy camera around with me everywhere. I just don't think I have like, and also I, I think when I'm like with my friends or family, it's really hard for me to like think about taking photos. I kind of like have to be alone to want to take mm -hmm. photos. So um, I think that the phones are, are really great for that. And I still think you can get really cool photos. And I almost think they kind of have like a, like a, like, yeah, the quality is not as great as it would be maybe with a camera, but I think they almost have this kind of like grainy, almost like film photo quality to them a bit, which I actually really like. Um, this is a photo on Casco Bay Lines. And I remember thinking, oh, I was just, I think I was just on my way. I don't know what I was doing. I, I, I don't think it was for work, but I remember thinking like, oh, I wish I, oh, I was house sitting for, uh, at a photographer's house. Um, who was on the island. And I remember thinking, I wish I had my real camera because like, I love this photo, but I just did it on my phone. And it's like, well, I still have this photo and I think it looks really good. Um, so I just think like phones can be so good for just like the best camera you have is the one that you have with you. And I am too lazy to carry my real camera around sometimes and phones have worked really, really well for me. Um, and this is another example of that. Um, Wow, this is gorgeous. I feel like a phone, I mean, the way you're talking, I mean, the, the, having a camera on your phone helps mm -hmm. you be more spontaneous with photography, I would think. Totally. Because you don't have to think about having the right lens uh, or, you know, carrying around all the equipment no. that you're associated with an actual camera. The phone is just right there in your hand. And most of us have one right there in our hands, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's an old adage that says the best camera is the one that you have on you. And that's really it with the phones because you always have your phone on you. So now you always have this camera on you. And, and sometimes the best photos are about being in the right place at the right time. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I mean, like th there is a way that you can use your phone and like still control it. Like I, in that last photo, I, I put it in kind of as an example of like you can expose for the for the highlight so like i'm walking down my street i see this house with this kind of funny green light you can expose for the highlights in your phone so i click on where the light is coming from and then i underexpose it a little bit because if if i don't do that then it's the whole thing's going to be bl blown out so you can still have control with the phone which i which i really like and i i think that's why i like doing it so much and it's funny because it's just this little thing that like people don't really know you can do um, I, I, I was mean, just I, gonna ask, like, how how do you know? Like, is do, should we go on the internet and start like um, kind of googling? I don't, yeah, you probably won't be able to see, but like, uh -huh. do you see that little square that pops up in the middle? Yeah, in the middle, right. So if you click that, and you can you can move it around, so you can click like where you want it to be. So like, if I click there, oh, I genuinely had no idea. You could and do then that. you can pull it down. <laughs> you can pull it down, and it changes oh, the exposure. and it changes the exposure. I can pull it up. I can pull. Oh, it that's down. awesome! All right. It's so easy. And like, you obviously don't want to underexpose when it's already really dark, but I think it works for that because I'm trying to make that window light, right? like the color that it is. And so therefore I have to expose for the highlight. And okay. it's just a really easy trick that makes, I think phone photos look, look a lot better. That's um, awesome. I'm going to totally going to use that now. <laughs> yeah. I, I showed all the people on this trip I was on and they were like, what? And but then I, <laughs> no, then they were like underexposing in dark rooms. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, no, you only want to use it. Not in every situation. Um, 
but but yeah I, I I like that you can you can still have a lot of control which I think is cool and with a phone camera I feel like you can make mistakes and you can just delete them it's easy and, and, and just start over and keep doing it and I'm kind of like okay if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't like I'm just doing it for fun right mm -hmm. so like lots of sometimes things don't work sometimes things from really far away it doesn't look good other times it does like that photo of New York City is like I was really far away but I think it still looked cool um so it just depends and there's no pressure because I'm not That's you great. know I'm not turning it in for the paper <laughs> <laughs> until um, today <laughs> do you have do do you have other photos uh in this lineup we can look at um, I, you know, I was told to send three, so. Okay, that's no, that's awesome. Um, let's, let's look at some of Greg's then. Wow, what are we looking at? Uh, so this is just, it's a macro shot of ice uh, on a creek in a gunquit. And um, I had been, uh, I held on to my old phone for a long time. I had, read that in the newer iPhones that there was going to be a serious upgrade to the lenses. So I held out for the iPhone 13 uh, and I got the Pro, which comes with three lenses, sort of the standard lens that all iPhones have, but also a wide angle and a uh, somewhat of a telephoto. Uh, but both of the normal and the wide lenses have really good macro capabilities you can get very very close to what you're shooting um and that's really an example here and one of the things i love about macro shooting is you can really just reduce an image down to sort of the design elements in it and it just the the sort of curves in the ice here caught my eye and just the way the sunlight so there's like a break in them and the sunlight is catching that so that's kind of caught my eye so how close to the surface uh, is this photo being taken? I am probably about two inches off the surface of the creek. Oh, wow. And, and the new phone, the iPhone 13, will focus even closer than that. You can get even closer than an inch. So if you're doing, say, nature photography and you're trying to focus on a bug or an aspect of a flower or something like that, would you recommend like an iPhone 13 or higher? Assuming that there will be. Yeah, features. I mean, if you can afford it, it's oh, you know yeah. the the iPhones get more and more expensive these days. I got lucky in that the uh, you know my wife and I and all of the kids had not upgraded their phones in a long time, so we got a deal through Verizon to upgrade. So the new phones didn't cost us that much. Um, Oh. You know, I think the base price for an iPhone 13 is like a thousand bucks or so. Mm -hmm. So it's a, right. it's a bit of an investment. You can achieve the same results if, if you have an older iPhone by buying like a third party lens kit. Um, there are companies like Moment and Moondog um, that make them. Uh, uh, those are some of the ones I know, but you can research and read reviews. So there are, there are lenses that slip over your camera and you, you've got to get the right one that like will work with what version of phone you have. So how much do you know off the top of your head, how much of a financial investment it is for some of those extra lenses from those third party vendors? Um, it depends. It depends on which type you get. And, you know, if you're getting a kit that has three lenses, oftentimes there'll be a kit that has a wide angle and a telephoto. Um, and those could run you 125 to 200 bucks. Okay. Um, but you can also, you can get, say, if macro is your thing, you can buy just a macro and probably just spend about 60 bucks on it. Good so job. it's, it, it's certainly well, not as expensive as upgrading to a new iPhone. Yeah, this this seems like a, a an easier financial uh, investment. Uh, yeah. for cell phone photography. Um, let's take a look at a couple more of your images. So this one is uh, from Sugarloaf. I'm actually riding the lift. Uh, while I photograph this. And this is on the new phone on telephoto. And um, to what Brianna was saying, um, you, can, you can tap 
a bright spot uh, in your photo and and, dra and drag sort of slide down the screen to underexpose the highlights. So when we talk about highlights in a photograph, they are the bright parts and the midtones are sort of the middle tones and then you get your shadows which are darker. Like the shadows here would be the snowmobile really, you don't see much detail in there. But the thing about any photograph, whether it's taken with a phone or a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, um, the chip that is looking at the scene you're photographing, it, the single most important thing you can try to wrap your mind around is that chip does not have the range that the human eye does. So you can look at a scene and see really bright stuff and see detail in it and you can see in shadow. In all of the chips, camera chips, they record a much more narrow range than your eye sees. And it's really important to understand that because what you have to do in a situation like this is you have to make a decision as to what is important in the photo. Because if I brightened up this photo so you could see the snowmobiler, um, all of the spray from the snow making guns would just be blown out white, like you wouldn't see any detail in there. But I was really attracted to that spray, so I exposed for that part, and that makes the rest of the picture go a little bit darker. And the rule of thumb, if you're taking notes, is if you expose for the highlights, you can always brighten the shadows a little bit uh, when you're working on the photo afterward. If your highlights are gone, you can never, you can't bring them back. Like once they're blown out, it, you can't do anything to call them back in. So another, uh, I'll get into it later, uh, but another fact of this photo is I shot it in a format that's called raw, raw photos. And, and the newer iPhones have that capability, but I'll elaborate on that um, a little later on. Cool. Wow, I didn't know that they were able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this one is uh, after a heavy wet snow. I was up in Waterford, Maine. I was, it was a freezing cold day. And I was supposed to photograph an ice cutting that didn't end up happening uh, because of issues with the lake and how it flooded. So I was on, I took a different route back home and I saw this scene and um, I actually, because I had my phone on me, I stopped my car briefly in the middle of this road and I shot it right through the windshield. I didn't want to get out because I had seen that there was a truck coming in my rear view. So I, and there really wasn't enough space to pull over. But you know, for an iPhone shot through a windshield, this is a pretty damn good photo. This is amazing. I you would not be able to tell that you were actually shooting through the windshield. Either your windshield's really clean, or uh, <laughs> unless you <laughs> camera un, unless you look at the top right corner, you can see where it gets a little okay. smudgy, and that's from the salt that didn't <laughs> did not get wiped off. Oh, the I see. <laughs> I think sometimes the dirty windshield can be kind of cool in a photo too, though. So okay, you yeah, know, yeah, tell us about it. artistic with it. Oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's true. So it gives you a little cinema verite kind of effect, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I don't know if we want to talk about some different apps you can put on your phone to help Absolutely. you do a little bit of editing with photos. Like, I don't know, Greg, if there's an app that you use on your phone. Um, yeah, so I have a couple. Um, I, I use, I actually prefer to shoot with an app called ProCam because it allows me to set some manual settings like shutter speed um, and white balance. Um, and it also allows me to um, shoot in the raw format or a TIFF format. Um, so the, the key about shooting in raw, raw is that the phone will record the image just as the chip sees it. It doesn't apply any processing to it. And with the iPhones, and well, I imagine with Androids too, I just, I've never used one, but there's a lot of processing that goes on, especially with the newer phones. Um, uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes things going on that you don't even realize. 
And shooting in that raw format is a way to sort of have a true image that isn't being over-processed by your phone. Uh, so the ProCam, ProCam app allows me to do that, although the, in the newer phones, the native camera app, uh, Apple native camera app has raw too. Do you have some that you like to do, use for processing? Yeah, I mean, like I, so I have an older phone. I don't, I don't have like a cool new one, but I think, I think a lot of younger people would know like Visco is just like, you can get in there and, and I pay, I think there's free and you can do a lot of stuff for free. Like you can bring up the shadows, you can bring down the highlights a little bit, you can crop, you can do all this stuff. But if you, and if you pay, I think, I think it was like 19 bucks for a year, you get all the other like dodging and burning and like different kinds of things that you would do in Photoshop. Um, so that one's just pretty easy, but you can also do that like on the actual camera app too. Like there are things that you can go in and if you hit edit at the bottom of your photo, there's all these different things that you can do just in the camera. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so you can do exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows, contrast, and that's just all in your, your phone. If you just click on it and you do edit, then it's all right there too. So you don't even need to download an app if you don't want to, but there are lots of, uh, lots of ones. And I mean, the, the Visco one, it has filters and you can use, use those if you want, um, but I don't generally, but you know, sometimes for fun, maybe never for work. <laughs> Can you guys talk a little bit about like how you, you frame a photos? Do you have to think about, um, do you have to think about that differently when you are shooting with mm. your phone compared to shooting with a camera? Like any other technical considerations to yeah. make sure, you know, that photo I mean, looks great. I don't, this is, I feel like this is something I thought about today, but like I shoot mostly vertical on my phone. Like, which I don't think as many people do. I don't know. I just, oh, yeah, that's... I, I feel like I see, I think vertical photos look good on phones. And I, and so therefore I just find myself shooting a lot in vertical and it's not something I do for work really very much. Right. Portraits, yeah, sometimes, but, um, but yeah, so I, I think, I think it's kind of a fun, I think, again, this is like me kind of separating mm -hmm. like fun photos and work photos and I don't always like the photo of the person on the ferry is is not um but I think it's kind of you can just challenge yourself to see the world in a little bit of a different way and I and it's funny I think the phone has had that effect on me where like I do kind of see things vertically a little bit now like with my <laughs> phone, which is funny that's really interesting because most photos for news um and if yes. you look in in most newspapers most photos are horizontal yeah. because and, we're all kind yeah. of used to that sort of shape of space um, oh, totally but I mean if, if you, on, on a website if, but if you look I mean we see everything like things on our phone are this shape so yes. I I think I think it's kind of fun um I again like I don't really do it for work like I I, I only for portraits really um so it's just kind of a different way I think for me to to take yeah. photos which is fun yeah, I do think because of web constraints and galleries that we tend to shoot more horizontals than when I first started in this business. Um, although, Brianna, I shot a feature that was vertical on Friday. It was Good. the first vertical I photo yeah, I shot in probably a year. Oh, that's funny. Which is yeah. bizarre. But you're so right, because I think of when I see like older, like newspaper, like I feel like when we had more space and like we, there were big photo pages, like there were a lot more verticals being like they were really important, right? Like right, right, yeah, to break the layout. Can... So yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 now it's just yeah. I guess ever since I started, it was very, it was very rare that we did it because everything was just going kind of straight online. So yeah. Yeah. Greg, do you do anything differently when you're shooting on a phone compared to a camera? Like, do you think about the framing or or how you're going to crop that photo? I would say that when I am photographing with the phone, I tend to get closer to my subject because it's harder to fill the frame because, you know, as professional photographers, we have an array of lenses and some telephoto lenses that that can bring the subjects really close to us or, you know, we can be farther away. And with the iPhones or any phones, cell phones, um, it's that telephoto, even if you have one like I do that has a telephoto lens, it, that's even, a, it's limited. It's not like a super telephoto. And 
what I think a lot of people might not realize is when you're zooming in on your phone, like if you want to get close to something and you're doing, you're spreading your fingers apart to make that to like zoom in, what most people don't realize is that's not happening optically. That's not an optical zoom. All that is happening is you're cropping the image before you make the photo. Mm -hmm. And there is very, like the iPhone, for example, even the newer ones, the chip is not that big. It is 12 megapixels, which used to be maybe 20 years ago was a lot of resolution, but now it's not. I mean, your, your smallest camera resolution is probably around 1820 these days, 1820 megapixels. So those, when you are zooming in, you are, your image quality breaks down the farther you go. And if you ever notice, like if you zoom all the way in as, as far as you can go and you make that image, if you look at it afterwards, more often than not, it looks like it kind of is digitized. And it's mm -hmm. just because that chip cannot handle that zooming. So to combat that, I try to get as close to my subject as possible when using the iPhone, just to fill the frame. Because I know that you really can't crop too much uh, either while using it or even afterwards uh, if you're, you know, cropping the photo as you're working it up. That's funny that you bring it up because I, I'm not a great photographer at all, uh, but I do have a camera on my phone and I do take a lot of photos. And I've noticed that when I just hold the phone up and take a photo, say, of scenery, there's a lot of empty space around it because I don't know how to frame it really, or I'm not, you know, good at it. But then when I zoom in, I lose so much of the perspective around the edges mm -hmm. that it's kind of hard to see sort of how majestic that tree was or, or, you know, how, how vast the ocean was around the bridge that I was taking a photo of. So I just I'm trying to figure out kind of like that happy medium of how much do I zoom in and, or do I zoom in at all? Um, is it just a matter of, of practice and, and doing it over and over and over? Um, I, how, how do you get better at that part? I feel like you just got to try a bunch of stuff. Mm. Like you try a zoomed in and then don't, then walk up or then just do right. something else. Or like, I, I don't know, like I was thinking about it when I was on this trip and it's like, sometimes that just straight on view, like as you're looking at it, it's just like never going to look, it won't ever look as beautiful as it does in real life. And I mean, yeah. that's the frustrating thing about photography. I don't even think if you have the best camera in the world, it can always hold up to something. So it's like, maybe get a different angle, maybe shoot through a window. Like, oh, maybe, yeah, okay. you know, like it, it might not ever look as good as it does in real life, but you can get a little creative with it. And I think that's why I like the phone is because you can just do a bunch and like, it doesn't, and it's so fast and it's so unintrusive, right? Like you can be with a group of people and they're walking and you just do a couple and then you run up after them. Like, it doesn't have to be a whole thing. Um, but yeah. So you mentioned like shooting through a window. Do you, is it, do you often use like a window or something like closer to you to kind of frame the photo and kind of I mean, give it I a little like I, I probably do too interest. much. <laughs> 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 I love shooting through windows. Uh, I, you know, it might be a little played out for me now because I do it so much, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, there's like, there's so many fun things you can try. I, a frame in a frame is very classic. I mean, people have been doing it probably forever. Mm -hmm um yeah I, I feel like there's a lot of little things you try weird angles you can just try stuff it's so easy to do it on on these phones it's like why not and then you right. can see afterwards what works you know that's true. yeah I think I think that whether you're using the phone or your camera some of the basic tenets of composition still apply because you're taking a three-dimensional world and you're transferring it to a two-dimensional result and there are things compositionally that you can do when making a photo to give a sense of depth. And for instance, uh, this isn't a great example, but in that photo of the snowy road, you've got this road that's converging to a point that gives you that sense of depth. depth. You've got a vanishing point going. And there are other things you can do with wide angles where you get closer to your subject or you use shadows to create depth and but I think one of the key things there is getting closer and then sort of looking at the light as to how you can be best convey a sense of depth in the image yeah 
I think it's about knowing. What about like shooting? Oh, no, go no, ahead. I, was just saying, I think it's about like knowing the limits too. Like, yeah, the bird that's at the top of that tree, like your iPhone's not going to be good for that, right? Like it just won't be, right. you know? So it's just, it's also about like knowing that like, you know, that's just probably not going to work. You can try it, try it, but it's probably, and maybe it will, who knows, but like, it probably won't. <laughs> One thing I've always wanted to do, like when I go to concerts and stuff, I've never been like right up near the stage. Um, but I do want to kind of document that I was there. But what I'm looking at is like a really bright stage and everybody else is in darkness. The rest of us are in darkness. So how do I make that photo better so that people will know that I am watching this concert by this artist and not just a big bright flash in the middle of, of the screen? Is that the... You had to expose for the highlight. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm taking your advice then. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's what that's yeah, what you're doing all along. Yeah. Tap, tap the screen on the stage yeah. where all the bright lights are and bring that down, slide down a little bit. So you're exposing for that. Okay. okay. I'm taking notes. I it will help a lot. It's the one little thing that I feel like people are like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, it'll, it'll help you. <laughs> and a lot yeah, I'm doing people. that right now. I'm like, oh, I had no yeah. idea I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we have a question from the audience, actually, um, from someone who is interested in sending photos to the paper for the your turn. Um, and a lot of these are nature photos that people have taken, you know, birds or snowy uh, kind of vistas or animals. Um, what are the best specs in which to send the photos so they show up um, in the paper? Um, in Any terms time? of like the type of file and the size of it, uh, JPEG yeah. is fine. and. 10 inches in the longest dimension, which means if it's a horizontal, 10 inches horizontal or 10 inches vertical, if it's vertical at 200 DPI. And that's plenty of resolution to run it pretty big in that section. Good advice. Um, have you, has either of you ever been like caught out somewhere where you didn't have your camera, um, but you did have your cell phone and you documented an actual you know, news event? because you happen to have that cell phone camera with you. Like, how do, how do you shoot action? How do you shoot news that's happening? Yeah, I don't know if I have. I have multiple times, but it really hasn't been like an action-packed scene where I'm dealing mm -hmm. with movement and worried about autofocus tracking. Mm -hmm. It's usually a, uh, a pretty static scene. Um, however, I will say that I have frequently used the iPhone for video clips uh, for the newspaper, for the website, um, just because uh, we, the difficulty we have as photojournalists is we have to make still images and that's our priority. But when an assignment also calls for video, um, it having to do both is it puts us into like this decision making mode and one of the things i like about the phone is it's just simple i don't have really have to think about too much mm -hmm. and and the video clips come out really good the phone is great about autofocus tracking so i've used it quite a bit over the years for um for shooting video great um what so my husband he has an iphone 12 um, that he bought specifically so he could shoot like dark skies, um, you know, meteor showers, that kind of thing. And he bought some extra equipment for it. But I'd love you guys to talk about how do you shoot, um, say, at constellations or meteors, or, or is that something that you can do uh, with a phone? It's a great, great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Greg. Yeah, I, um, I think it's hard enough to photograph like the Milky Way mm -hmm. with a mirror with, with like a regular camera. Um, are you just making it harder for yourself? If yeah, you're there are certain settings you have to like, you really can't go over an eight second exposure, otherwise your stars start elongating. So the idea of trying to do it with a phone, it sort of like stresses me out just thinking about it. <laughs> because you, there's only so much that you can control about the phone, um, and I have not tried. So I, I would have to imagine that in low light photography, 
I'm not exactly sure what the phones are doing anymore. I know they've gotten better for low light photography, but I think what they're doing is they might be taking multiple exposures and combining them together. And this is, you know, this is a bigger topic for us as photojournalists and using phone is that for work is that um, we have to be very careful about what that processing is doing because we wouldn't, for example, we wouldn't take a hundred, you know, frames and combine them together into a single image and call it a photograph and run it in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the phones are doing that in the background without our knowledge, which is one of the reasons I shoot raw. If I think that an image might end up in the newspaper, I always shoot raw. The downside of RAW, which I should say, is that the files are huge. Um, but that's also why I, when I buy a new phone, I tend to get one with a lot of storage capacity for that very reason. So I can st st store those RAW files. Um, but in terms, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think I would even want to try to photograph the next guy with an iPhone. I think he'll take that as a challenge then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel like there are some things for us we'll just like, we'll use like regular camera for like, yeah, yeah. you know, um, but but other people might not be like that, right? Like I, I, I truly like people all the time will be like, what's a good like $500 camera I can buy? And I'm like, just use your phone. Like, on, like, honestly, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're, Greg, you probably know better because you know more about, like, all the stuff. But, um, but I, I, I do think that, like, the, the phone is really good. Um, but if, if you're going to buy a camera, like, probably more like 800 to 1,000 for yeah. it to be worth it. Am I wrong? I, I don't know. No, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the cameras that you can buy for 500 are, you're really... <laughs> They're not significantly better than the phone. And right. you can, you know, it does give you an opportunity to get other lenses, but then you're spending more money, which is what we're saying is like, you know, if you want to get serious about photography, it you're looking at dropping a grand just to get started. Yeah. yeah. So I think for most people, the camera phone is, it, it's yeah. going to be our tool because it, it's so portable and totally. And, oh. and I think it's a really good tool. Like, there are people that work in photography and I mean, I think a little bit less now, but like that really did just use their phone. Like it was, I feel like it was kind of a popular thing, like more of like five years ago, I'm thinking of David Gutenfelder, this photographer who just used his phone to do stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, and I like that it's really unobtrusive. Like I was in Italy and I, you know, can take photos of people on the street a little bit, like no one's, you're just looking at your phone like everyone's doing this all the time are they not like everywhere right. you go now so it is really kind of a cool tool for like street photography I think which is not something that I like do a lot but I it's kind of fun on the phone because I don't know yeah, yeah it's you know it's not noticeable mm -mm. everyone's yeah. on their phone no one's gonna look twice at you holding up a phone ever right. um so it's, so it's, what is your each for each of you what's your favorite thing to shoot um, on a phone and what's your least favorite thing to try to shoot on a phone oh. what do you think it works really well for i haven't done it but my least favorite would be the night sky <laughs> <laughs> uh in in years ago i would have said that my favorite thing to photograph on my phone would be my kids but they're uh -huh. not young anymore and so i don't do that as much um, so I don't know if I have a favorite thing to photograph on the phone. I think these days, for me, I use it most often at the ski area. Uh, and there are times where I bring my little mirrorless Sony camera with me, but more often than not, I've got my phone in my pocket. And whether I'm skiing down the slopes and shooting clips of my kids skiing or riding or shooting stuff from the lift, it's really that convenience of having a really decent camera that happens to fit into a pocket. Cool. What about you, Brianna? I think my favorite thing is probably just like, I don't know if landscapes is the right word, I guess, 
but like kind of the photos I showed just like scenes like uh, in my life just like walking down the street I see something cool I take a photo I wouldn't I I wouldn't do that on my regular camera I don't know because I wouldn't I lose the file I, I don't know I just I, you know it would disappear in some folder somewhere because it wouldn't go into the paper um so just kind of like little scenes of my life I I really feel like it is like the way that I document like my personal life is on the phone so taking photos of my fiance, of my cat, um, just just like my everyday life or just like things that I see on the street um, and traveling. I, I took almost all photos on my phone and, um, you know, I hope I don't regret it someday, but I, I think the quality is good and I'm not going to, I'm not going to print them out. You know, I'm just not the person who's going to like print out my photos, really. You probably could. Um, and least favorite, I guess probably like, I work <laughs> like like yeah like a a fat a fast paced news event I guess is the, which you described probably would be my least favorite thing I guess or like sports I don't know how I would do that um let's hope that never happens <laughs> I hope I always have my 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 real camera for that I don't think I'd have suggestions about shooting sports on a phone great I don't know like I feel like I've been asked that before and I was like uh, yeah that would rank right up hard. the night sky photography for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be really hard because you've got a lot of action going in all different directions. And I would think that'd be hot, kind of hard. I'd to say track. take a video of your kids playing sports on your phone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, what other advice would you guys have for shooting uh, with a, a phone camera as opposed to a camera camera? Um, I think my biggest piece of advice would be to turn off the HDR function. Hmm. And this is so. What does that do? Tell us. Yeah. So HDR stands for high dynamic range, and it's inherent. It's been inherent in the native camera app for uh, I, Apple's native camera app for years. Um, and what it does is it is taking multiple exposures um, and recording bright parts of the scene and dark parts of the scene, and it is. It's a way to expand that range that the chip can't see. So it might take 10 images of that landscape you're shooting and then behind the scenes, meld them all into one and then process it. But what I, the thing that irritates me about the HDR images and you know, if you have it on, you might notice it, is the colors get really weird and oh. the images actually end up looking very flat. They don't have much contrast. And so I just don't like the way they look. You know, the, most people making images with their iPhones are not sort of um, held to the standards that Brianna and I are, the photojournalism ethics of not, you know, of combining images or multiple exposures. Um, so it's not just that it's really i just don't really care for the way they look because they look flat and the colors are really weird so i would say you know turn the hdr off it's a very simple thing to do and see if that improves your photos it's literally oh, the first sense. thing i do yeah I, I i personally just can't really stand the way that hdr stuff it just i i feel like it just doesn't it's not the way it looks you know and and that bothers me. Like it just, it makes it look like something it's not to me. Um, huh. I agree. That's really good. It's, it's good advice. Just, just see what you can do without that and, and try, try controlling the exposure a little bit. It's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out and do that like today. Yeah. I'm yeah. totally going to try that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not for every situation, but um, it's, it'll, I think it'll make a difference. It's really easy. Oh, uh, technical question on the HDR. How do you how do you turn it off? Like, where do, where do you look? Um, well, it depends on the version phone you have, but in the name in the native app, um, it is usually it has a new icon. Right, it's usually like right here on my phone. Oh, uh, it's oh, right okay. at the top, and so I have the oval? SE. It's a little oval. It says HDR, and it. You can just tap and a little X will go through it and that's Excellent. turning it off. Good to know. Yeah, and I actually don't know where it is on the 13. They upgraded the app and I actually have it set so it doesn't come on. There was something in the settings that I could set. Oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that might be something to is. Google. Uh, I may, I may have model. permanently disabled it so it doesn't even show up on the screen anymore. I, I just realized mine was on. So maybe that's why I haven't liked this phone for the last month or so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try it again with this off and see if I like the photos better. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that's our time. And I really, really want to thank you to Greg and Brianna uh, for for taking the time to talk with us. And uh, I actually learned a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to be watching the, this video again. Um, and I would also like to thank all of our attendees for taking the time to show up here. Um, I hope this was informative and helped you think about a potential career in journalism, or at the very least, how to improve your photography. Um, we'll be doing more of these, focusing on different aspects of the news, like sports reporting or how to interview someone. Those are some of the sessions we've got coming up. Um, and how to get started at a newspaper. I know that's been a question for a lot of students. And we also want to hear your ideas for potential sessions for the future. Um, there's probably a lot that we didn't cover that you're curious about, so please feel free to drop me a line and tell us. My email address is klee -E at pressherald.com. And I mean it when I say we really do wanna hear from you, uh, not just about your future ideas, but uh, your takeaways from the sessions, uh, what worked for you and what do you want more of. Uh, thank you again for coming everyone. And please continue to support your local news organization. We rely on your support and your feedback. Have a great day all. Thanks. Bye.